Welcome to another inspiring episode of the Elite Expert Insider Podcast. Hosts Melanie Johnson and Jen Foster are the owners of Elite Online Publishing. They're both Wall Street Journal, USA Today bestselling authors. We're really glad you're here because this podcast was designed for you. Meet industry experts that share their secrets and strategies. Get successful results for your business in money, relationships, health, and your life. Each episode is going to inspire you to take action towards reaching your greatness. Hi, everyone. It's Melanie Johnson, along with my co-host, Jen Foster. Hey, Jen, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How is everyone today? Good. Well, we have a special guest. We have one of our very own authors, and he is here with us today, Mark Markley. He is an author. He is a university professor, and he has written the book, Sandra's Syndrome. So I'm going to take you back to 1978, an historic date that the entire church attempted to end racism, and it was the first battle of to end the separation of and segregation for all special children of God. This is really, really a unique and special book. And we have Mark on today to really go deep and tell us why he wrote the book and what the book's about and how it can really change the world with this perspective. Mark, welcome. Pleasure to be here. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Mark, and how you came up with the idea for Sandra Syndrome. Well, some years ago, I was in Barnes and Noble and I saw a book for sale written by Kathy Rice. Now, Kathy is the creator of Dr. Temperance Brennan, if you may remember Bones on television. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And she is a forensic anthropologist. And she, along with the FBI and her association with that, she solves mysteries by looking at people's bones. And this book was entitled Bones Never Lie. But there was a character in the book who, when it was revealed, my mind just exploded because I thought, what if a person like this was at BYU? And what if a person like this fell in love? And so I took this character from, or the aspect of what this character is, and I began to develop a storyline regarding her and what she is. And so that's where the basis of it came. But Sandra is a unique individual. She holds a very, very dark secret. And she doesn't want people to know what this secret is. And through the first, oh, 75 pages of the book, it remains a secret until she finally tells Luke this person that she has met and loves what she is. And um, it's explosive. And I really don't want to tell anybody what it is. I want them to read the book, get to page 75, and then go, what in the world is this? Because it is surprising. It really is. And for me, when I learned about this, when I was reading this book by Kathy Wrights, I went immediately to my computer and I was up, you know, and I had classes the next day, but I was up until about two, three in the morning, just researching this and understanding people and what we are. Mm -hmm. And I even shared it with students and I said, somebody's got to write a story about this. And two days after I retired, I started to write the story myself because no one else picked it up. And so it's been a labor of love. I finished it. I think it's humorous, sensual, but it's poignant. And it has a relevant message for many of our readers and people who want to understand those individuals who we consider to be uncommon. Mm -hmm. So you talk about, you know, to helping this book is going to help understanding or get rid of racial bigotry, superstitions, bias towards uncommon people. What is your hope for the book after people read this? Is there an action they're going to take? Is there a feeling they're going to have? Is there a different perspective or maybe all of those things? I think it's a combination of each and every one of those things. Mm -hmm. um, again, I don't want to go too deep into the book itself, but 
I think we need to look at ourselves as genetic beings. And when I grew as a young boy within the Mormon faith, I hate to say it, and I know I'll have family members that will be upset with me, mm -hmm. but I was taught to be a bigot, particularly towards Black people. Mm -hmm. Because prior to June 8th, 1978, Blacks could not hold the priesthood in the LDS church. They right. were denied temple blessings and the opportunity to be married in a temple for time and all eternity. Mm -hmm. Which, in the Mormon faith, I think is a pretty romantic thought. However, um, my faith, even my parents, taught me that Black people were not equal, that they were individuals who the Lord had, over time, created so that they could be easily seen and discriminated against. And it, it bothered me. It bothered me as I was a student at BYU, and I was finishing my uh, degrees there. And I, I just started to change my attitude and my beliefs about that. And so I'm hoping that this book will try to show where we have a certain bias racially, but it also creates a bias for people that we consider to be uncommon. Mm -hmm. And um, we will discriminate against those people. And I go back to my writing coach. She asked me, who is the antagonist in your book? And I responded, religion. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it is too far to go to say that religions have been probably the greater culprit for bias and prejudice racially, homophobically, Mm -hmm. and in other social issues uh, regarding economics and other kinds of situations. Yeah. And um, I go along with Steven Weinberg. Steven Weinberg was a physicist, Nobel winning physicist. And he said a good number of things about religion. He said, with or without religion, good people will always do good things, and evil people will always do evil things. But for good people to do evil things, that takes religion. And I will mark Abraham and Isaac, where Abraham, who believed that it was God's will to take his only son, and lift a knife and come down with it. I mean, there fundamentally, that is an issue that I cannot accept. And now that we see all of the other kinds of biases and prejudices that we have in a number of different areas that come from the teachings of religion, you know, I include my rearing to be biased against Blacks. Mm -hmm. I include the terrorists who hijack airplanes or, you know, put on bombs around their, under their coats and go in and explode and kill people. The people who are of faith also go to abortion clinics and create mayhem mm -hmm. and destruction. And they also will threaten and have killed because they think they're doing God's will. Right. They think they're doing something righteous. I hope that what my book will do in some way is say to people, no, we really need to take a look at how religions teach, how they expose this prejudice and bias to people to where they create an unfair playing field toward people. Yeah. I never told you what Sandra's secret is. Yeah, we don't know yet. You don't have to read no, the book. And, and, <laughs> and I don't really want to tell anyone. Yeah, we, we I, don't I don't have want to them tell to read the book. And then yes. if they want to email me on the website, 
I'll be more than happy to get into a conversation and I'll do my best to keep up with everyone. But I want people to understand this. Yeah, so, I was going to say, I, I grew up, you know, similar background as you. And I consider myself a non-racial person. I don't judge or put people in the categories. But sometimes I think I catch myself putting someone in a category or putting someone in a, even just a, you know, where they're from, right? Like, oh, they don't look like they're from Mexico. They don't look like they're from, you know, Japan or whatever it is. And I find myself saying those kind of things, not thinking that I'm being racial or biased, but I am. So, well, yes. and, I, and I know it's because of how I was raised, but even just, we were watching a movie the other night, um, this cute new movie, you can go watch it called Father of the Bride and the groom looks like a normal white guy to me, but he's from Mexico. And so they say in there that he's from Mexico. And I thought, I'm for sure that actor's not from Mexico. So when the movie was over, we looked him up and I'm like, for sure he's not from Mexico. And yes, he's from Mexico. <laughs> he just looks like a white guy because his hair's lighter and his skin's lighter. Doesn't mean he's not from Mexico. Mm. You can't just put everyone in a category because of their skin color. And I find myself doing that and I don't mean to, right? So oh, I think this and book, I think will really help a lot of people because there's a lot of un uncommon things in a lot of people. And we are as humans quick to judge someone because of what they're wearing or because of their hair color or because of their skin color. But hopefully this book will help people to have an unbiased towards all people. Well, and, and I agree with you. And I know that when I was a university instructor and I tried to teach these principles to students, many of them would balk at me and say, oh, I'm not a prejudiced person. You know, I have many friends who are black or many people who are LGBTQ or I have many people who are Hispanic. You know, I know I have several friends and that's a defensive statement that because they are friends, they do not hold a bias or prejudice, but in fact, we do. Mm -hmm. We do. We hold a bias or a prejudice, even though we say, "Oh, I have friends who are this way or that way." Or that. You know, I'm not, yeah. I'm not to blame. Well, there's a subliminal, maybe even an unconscious aspect to that in the behavior of people. Yeah, and and that's what I hope people will read into this story and understand because. Sandra, bless her heart, she is a sweetheart. She is really a wonderful individual, but boy, she is tremendously unique. And once you know, then it becomes your secret with her, because the secret is not revealed to the world until the end of the book. How do you think um, the churches, Mormon, which, you know, you came from a Mormon background, Jen came from a Mormon background, but we have all of the religious symbols on the cover of the book. How do you think churches or the religion will respond to this? Oh, I think there are many people who will want to take a knife or a gun to me. I'm not ashamed or naive enough to believe that some people would want to do me harm. Okay. Hey, I'm 70 years old. I, if people want to kill me, I've lived a pretty good life. And I've got a good story. And the next two books following this story are even going to be better uh, in regard to the teaching of these principles. Because people will understand that we do. We hold a bias and a prejudice towards people because we just think this isn't right. You know, God would never do this. Mm -hmm. Then we find out God's doing all of it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and Sandra, there's one part in the book um, where she's kneeling at her bed in prayer. She's a good LDS girl and she's kneeling at her bed and she gets into arguments with God and she's always asking, why am I what I am? Isn't there even a heavenly mother there? I've been taught about a heavenly mother. Isn't there anyone there who will help take my position and i think it's sad that we don't hear these people and understand that what makes them so unique is nothing of their creation it was given to them from birth mm -hmm. and we need to understand our feeling and our behavior towards these people because um, 
you'll fight with Sandra, you'll fall in love with her. And uh, Luke is humorous, he's fun, and you'll fall in love with him. And uh, in fact, I think he's the greatest, one of the greatest characters because of his love and devotion for Sandra. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why I call it a love story of true life fiction. It, it can happen to anyone that you're entitled to still fall in love. And like we say, you know, God makes no mistakes. They say you were born this way. So and God makes no, if you believe that God makes no mistakes, there's, there's a reason. No arguments for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, and um, there are so many answers that I have now. And that's why I'm very anxious to get the second book written because um, of what happens at the end of Sandra Syndrome. And there is a miraculous occurrence that occurs on the, on the final page of the book. And um, that won't be answered until the, the next book. Awesome. Well, we're excited for the book that will release on July 26th. So you can go and get it on sale on that day and then regular price after that. So you can pick up the ebook and then the paperback will also be released as well. You can pick up the paperback. And it is a great read, and you can find out what Sandra's secret is. Yes. We I hope you guys will, will all go to that, and you can find the book at markmerkley.com. We'll put that URL and that domain name up at the bottom of the show notes. I promise. I'll do my best. I, I hope that I have 100,000 emails I need to answer, and I'll do my best to get to everyone. But, you know, I don't know if 100,000 is a realistic but, you know, I want as many people to read this book as possible. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say too much about money because money doesn't mean that much to me. I have a concept, an idea that I want to get across to people. And if there's any money to be made, it, it will go into an endowment and it'll be used for education. Yeah. Well, we are looking forward to this book and the next book that you're going to publish. And if you would like to publish with Elite Online Publishing, just go to our website and hit the submission. Um, just like Mark's book, we know it's going to be a bestseller because that's what we do for our authors. So we'll see you next time. Hope you have a great week, everyone.